friends, welcome back to Not Quite Homesteading. Today we're in the kitchen and we are unboxing some long awaited garden and preservation tools. If this is your first time visiting the channel, my name is Ebony. I'm gardening in coastal South Carolina zone 8B and I appreciate you for stopping by. I haven't really talked much about my wish list for garden things that I want to get in order to make either gardening easier or preservation easier, but I have been working diligently towards getting some of the things that I want in order to make sure that I have the best experience possible with garden, with gardening and with making sure that we're doing the best to preserve our harvest. So I wanted to share a couple of quick things with you that I'm gonna be unboxing that hopefully will make a range of things easier for me as we move into the fall season. And I just wanted to share it with you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Now, I will preface with, um, I know that you guys have seen a couple of videos now where I have been using like the red solo cups and I actually did invest in like one kind of like really long seed tray. And I guess in my opinion, it's really long. That might be subjective, but um, I don't know the sizes, but I want to say it might be like the uh, three inch like seed trays so they're virtually like large enough to allow a plant that maybe either grows quickly or that needs a little bit more room um before you know goes into like the ground or something just to decrease the number of times that i have to up pot stuff so i'll like definitely pan that like in the video so that you guys can see that i've been using those mediums in order to like start seeds but one of the things i did invest in are seed trays so this is one of the things that I'm adding to my garden uh, tool lineup to just make things a little bit easier when it comes to starting seeds. For one, um, the method that I used during the spring and summer, it definitely worked, but it was a little tedious, a little bit more tedious than I would have liked. And the reason being is because I used a very shallow, like, pot layer of potting soil. I kind of mixed in multiple seeds and you know, I had to transplant seeds out very, very quickly. And then it just kind of became this like constant cycle of transplanting where, you know, had I had something like um, that was actually made for seed starting, I think I could have gone a little bit longer and managed the process a little bit better. In that, of course, seeds get washed over. There were seeds that got shifted throughout that um, seedling phase and you know, it wasn't, I wouldn't say I wouldn't do it again if I needed to, but if I can do it a little bit smarter, I definitely will do that. These are seed trays with a humidity dome, which is actually going to be great for covering seedlings that are vulnerable, um, especially in the fall, such as like brassicas. And then in the winter, when we're sowing for summer, you know, to be able to provide the humidity for things like peppers and eggplant that need it in the seed starting stage. So it has a dome lid with a vent that I can adjust how much air I want to come into the actual seed trays. So each one of these is how many? I don't remember this stuff, y'all. <laughs> so it's a 10 pack. 10 pack of these with 12 holes each, which I think is really good. I think that's um, more than plenty as far as like seed starting trays and slots that I need. Now, I will say the one thing, um, and I did notice this before I bought them, is on the bottom. I'm not really sure how this like little push out thing is going to work. I hope that it's not a situation where when I go to push them out, I end up breaking the tray. I would like to keep these, you know, and keep them in rotation for use. But this is the tray itself. It comes with like little air vents. I guess I have to do a little bit of assembling. And then it comes with a couple of like garden tools. So I guess a little divot and then, um, Oh, maybe this, I think this is like for, to help me get the seeds out. So maybe that's not as big a concern as I thought it was. I don't know. Okay, so now it's all starting to make sense. I didn't, I didn't realize when I purchased this that this was separate. I thought this piece was just like one piece and then you had like the lids. So you actually have a tray so that you can water into the tray instead of watering the seedlings. And then you have the little seed starting 
And this is kind of just like the um, little heavy duty plastic that you would find like at Home Depot if you were getting like the little um, plastic saucers for your uh, plant pots or anything like that. So it should be pretty sturdy and hold up for quite a little bit. But yes, I guess you can stick the little thing through here to help um, or just kind of fish it out with a little tool. And I actually really like these. I might get some more of these. So far, um, just kind of looking at it, I think this might work out well. So we have 10 of those. And then you can see here, um, they did provide like labels with this. And then that's the little dome piece. And you just stick this up. And then you just stick this in, I guess this part here, maybe it goes this way. I feel like that makes more sense, no? No, that doesn't make sense because then how would I turn it? <laughs> um, stick this through here. And then you just, that's pretty cool. I actually really like these. I might order more of these. Um, I don't think I need too many more, but it might be worth mainly for the um, winter seed starting season for summer crops when you know we're planting lots of peppers. Um, this might actually be more handy than I'm expecting. And what I'm thinking with that is because I wanna get into the habit of seeding one seed per tray, as opposed to just dropping multiple seeds, um, I feel like I end up wasting plants and then I end up with too many plants because I don't wanna get rid of them once they've like grown up. So I think I can manage a little bit better with seeding one at a time and making sure I get the right number of plants that I want for each plant. So that's one thing. The second thing we got is the seeding square. I have been wanting this for probably the entire year I've been gardening, um, just in terms of waiting, building the garden and picking up like tools like this. I've kind of put it on the back burner because, you know, building the garden has been quite costly and to spend $30 on this when you're building beds that cost hundreds of dollars, um, it just didn't seem practical. It also didn't seem like a necessity at that time. I do want to play around with square foot gardening this fall. So I'm not going to fully convert to just square foot gardening in general, but I want to try it, see how I like it in comparison to what I've been doing, and then we'll determine, you know, I guess when and how to use square foot gardening. Um, I think it could work well for some things, and I think there are some things that it just sticking to regular, just fitting it in where it can get in, will work better for me in raised beds. So, obviously, I'm sure many of you have seen this before. Uh, this comes with a little divot tool that can go inside each of the holes. Um, this thing costs about 30 bucks, if I remember correctly, which I think is a lot for a little plastic square. But here we are. <laughs> I've joined the, the party. And then it comes with a planting guide so that you know which crops to use in which color-coded holes here. So I'm hoping that this will help me with things like rooting vegetables for sure, um, beets, turnips, rutabagas, even carrots. Now, I don't have pelleted carrot seeds and that is something I want to try, which I probably will try closer to the spring. But even still, if I can manage to drop just a few seeds in each of the holes, I'm hoping that this will help me get um, better production out of certain crops. And I think it's pretty cool. You know, it's color coded to the holes. Um, and then it just has a list of, you know, how much you can actually plant for each one. So I'm definitely gonna be using this in the new beds that I just put down. If you haven't seen the videos where I showed the new beds, I'll link one at the end um, where I show you guys, you know, what, we put down the beds still are not filled yet with soil but i will be doing that soon and we will be planting very soon and the last thing that i'm going to show you guys is probably what i'm most excited about um, i don't have all the accessories for it but it's definitely 
a long awaited uh, purchase. And that is gonna be my vacuum sealer. So I finally took the plunge and made the investment in getting a vacuum sealer. I had done the research for this probably about six or seven months ago. I've been looking, you know, and then I finally saw one that I was like, I think that's the one that I want to get. Um, I actually saw someone using it and the seal that they got on their bags and what they were raving about, you know, just the overall quality of the machine was actually really, really good. So I went ahead and researched that product. Um, I like the way it looked. It's a little, probably a little larger than like your conventional vacuum sealers, but I am the type of person I would prefer to invest in something quality and invest in it one time than to get something that I know is going to be an interim purchase and then I end up having to replace it a few years down the line. So the first thing that they put on top here is a quick start card. Um, the brand that I purchased from was Avid Armor and the model of the vacuum sealer is the A100. So it tells you a quick start guide, you know, plug it in, press on and off, Place open into the vacuum sealer bag across the vacuum channel tray. Close the lid, press start. Hold down lid handle, of course. Um, once cycle is complete, the machine will beep and the lid will release. Inspect the bag to make sure it's tight and complete and the bag is now ready for storage. So I like the simplified <laughs> how to use on this because um, no one wants to read a bazillion pages in a manual for um, something that should be pretty simple. The product does come with a one year warranty, but they do have um, an incentivized extended warranty on this where if you fill out a review, you can actually get a two year extended warranty and they tell you how. And then um, it has like a cute little thank you note in here. And then it actually comes with some pre-cut bags as well. Now, I, don't, I, I feel like I do remember reading that, but I don't remember. I think these are, if I'm not mistaken, they are pint bags. So it's nice to have this. Now, I did order extra accessories to go with this. So the accessories, they should be coming today, the day that I'm filming this. Um, I won't show them in this video or if they do get here before I actually edit and post the video, then I can probably do a quick uh, scan. Of course, it comes with a full manual as well. So you can um, read through that as well. It also tells you how to package with canisters. And I did get, that was one of the parts that I got with this. So um, I will be reading that later on. So the packaging is not bad, pretty simple. Well, I guess I could have just did this. I didn't need to bust the bag open. Say that. So this is the vacuum sealer up close. Now I will say uh, it's it's sizable, but it's not like super big. I opted to get this directly from the manufacturer. They do sell this on Amazon. I will link it on Amazon in my description box um, using my Amazon affiliate link if you are someone that really needs you know one or two day shipping because i think this is like available next day if i remember correctly and you wanted to purchase this product um amazon definitely is the way to go and not that i have an issue getting any product from amazon but with things like this that are quite costly um i really do prefer to get them from the manufacturer and i think in the cases of stuff like this the manufacturers tend to have um, greater investment in reliability and accountability with the carriers because you know they're shipping their own products and they know that their products are not you know inexpensive. Um, not to say that Amazon doesn't refund you know if you need to quite easily, but I just feel like with certain things it's just better to go through the manufacturer. So that's why. I purchased this directly from them. It has its little operating tips here. I think the little things I pulled out, obviously they go around this little edge here. So I'll go ahead and put the, um, the elastics on or whatever those things are, the cushions. But I'm going to place this on my counter. I've thought about what I wanted to do with it. I'm gonna put it in place where my uh, slow cooker is right now. And what that will do is allow me to just have this ready and available 
throughout the preservation season. I haven't really started preserving a ton of stuff like the tomatoes. Um, I've preserved peppers, like I've frozen them, but I really wanna get some of those things packed into tighter bags so that we can preserve them a little bit longer and prevent things like ice crystals from building up in the Ziploc bag. So I will be using this quite a bit, probably for the next few months. During the off season, is if there's really an off season, <laughs> I will go ahead and try to find a different place to put this so that we can have that counter space when we're not really using this as frequently. So this will rest here for the majority of the season and who knows i might decide to just leave it here if i find that it doesn't interfere too much it's not like i'm preparing a ton of stuff down at this end of the counter this is really kind of our coffee corner but i did want to point out the other thing that the person mentioned about this that i really liked and what made me start looking into it is your ability to choose the functions. So they have a marinate function, an accessory function, a pulse vac, which is where you want to control how tight the seal is, and then an impulse seal. So you have the option to flex your seals the way that you need to, to fit whatever you're vacuum sealing. And I really did like that about it. Um, and you can adjust the seal time as well on the vacuum seal. As of right now, I'm really happy with the investment. Um, I'll let you guys know as I'm using it and as I'm preserving things, you know, how I feel about it. But so far, it seems like a worthy investment. I hope that I am as happy with it as people have stated in their reviews that they are. But that's everything that we've picked up so far for the garden. Let me know what you guys think of this particular vacuum sealer and the other tools that I picked up. If you have tried any of them, um, if you have seen them, if it's a wish list item, um, let me know. And I look forward to reading your comments. I appreciate you guys for spending time with me in the kitchen today, friends. Don't forget to visit our affiliate links down in the description box. I will have all of these products listed with my Amazon links for you guys to be able to peruse them yourselves. And let's keep learning, sewing, and growing together. Until our next garden update. Bye.